And we're back for game number two of this best of three. EG and Team Dignitas squaring off in an elimination match here in the lower bracket of the G1 Champions League. I'm AC, joined by Merlini for the broadcast. And yeah, man, I think both of us were a little stunned and shocked with how well EG was able to deal with all of the pressure Dignitas was applying. Was there something Dignitas wasn't doing correctly, or was it just that good a play out of EG? Uh, I think Snaking had a quite, uh, like, he had some big mistakes there. First was that a blind RP uh, near their T2, yeah. and then just getting caught out a lot. I think his item choice was very good. That Ghost Scepter definitely saved him a lot, but he got caught out in a few crucial situations that allowed Evil Geniuses to get those clutch kills and really capitalize on those. Uh, Evil Geniuses, they died, but they were, like, kind of necessary deaths. Sometimes you just have to take fights and trade a little bit just so you can delay the game a little bit longer mm -hmm. but snaking zest they were very very costly and i think uh, a lot of them cost them the game and Aoi wasn't able to farm a lot but that's not really his fault right. that's pretty much just the way the lineup is the way the laning phase worked and uh with clinks's early early orchid he was just he wasn't able to farm the rest so that's not his fault i think uh a lot of it lies w with uh the magnus playing that game and honestly, towards the end, he caught up fairly well. I mean, obviously, he wanted to be a little bit um, further along than he was. But by the time all was said and done, he was in the top three, if I'm not mistaken, in total total net worth. It was really J.O. And I'll tell you, that game was a perfect example of one of the things that I think is beautiful in Dota. You know, it's so easy to get excited over big things like RPs and big plays. I feel like Demon played really well down the stretch. I mean, he did good all game, or did well all game, I should say. But um, it, it was really... Down the, in the last two or three fights, I felt like he was really maximizing his hero's potential in the storm spirit and making a lot happen. J.O. didn't do anything that made me leap out of my chair that entire game. But I'll tell you what J.O. did was his job. He did his job, did exactly what they needed of him. He wasn't racking up 35 kills or anything stupid like that. He was split pushing lanes. He was finding his farm. He was applying pressure when he could. And more importantly, he was there and in the right position every time there was an engagement to sit around the periphery of a fight and do the damage it needed to be done and I feel like honestly it's so easy to look at a game like we just saw where there's so much flashy stuff going on you've got Rubik still an RP and stealing chaotic offering and all these great plays on both sides J.O. quietly I feel like was the heartbeat of that evil genius's lineup last game mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you there EG played very well and J.O. did do his job he didn't he didn't go like funny and just go absolutely <laughs> insane around right. the map but he did his job and uh, interestingly enough, Nyx really didn't have that much of an impact on the game. He was kind of there to like be annoying in lane and shut down Luna, but come like 20 to 30 minutes in the game, he didn't actually do anything, which right. is very interesting because most of the time we just see Nyx just demolish the other team. Uh, but just with the hero comp and the lineups, Clinks and it uh, looks like Clinks and Storm Spirit did a lot more in the middle late game. So very good draft by EG overall. Take a look at the draft in front of us. We got a DS, and it's been a while, and it's kind of hard to believe. I, something I, I honestly did not think was ever going to happen, but it is beginning to happen a little bit. As you're beginning to see Darkseer fall a little bit and how highly valued he is in the West. I mean, the guy, you know, that hero has just been the hot, most consistently highly valued hero in the entire uh, in the entire lifespan of Dota 2. Well, actually, that's a lie. If you go back to right around the time I started casting originally, like, March of 2012 was when I cast my first match of Dota. That was right before he blew up in popularity when people realized, holy crap, you know, and that was honestly when he was still way overpowered with being able to lay down his wall and make allied illusions with a scepter. But, um, you know, seeing him banned out first here, or yeah, that's a first ban in the first phase, honestly kind of caught me by surprise. He's just a hero that we are not seeing given quite as much attention. He's still picked and banned very frequently. In fact, one of the most frequently picked and banned heroes in the entirety of the game. But still, just thought that was worth mentioning. What they end up giving away is an EO who's now paired up with a Wisp. Puck going to join the lineup for Team Dignitas as well. EG, who leads this series one to nothing. Two very high-value heroes in Bad Rider and Rubik looking to, to uh, get their lineup together uh, here. Now, what do you think about a Disruptor pick now that we do see that EO? I think Disruptor is very, very good here. His uh, silence just works wonders against Puck. And again, the send back, as everyone knows, is a really, really good versus Wisp combo. Uh, the only problem is he doesn't really have good setup. There's no Darkseer and there's no RP. And those are the two main spells that you see in combination with uh, Kinetic Field and Static Storm just to, just to completely own team fights. Uh, so I don't know if they're actually going to take it 
Again, I'm surprised no Knicks has been taken. What happened at Knicks? <laughs> Knicks is that, that's yeah. I mean, we talked about that and mentioned it briefly. Knicks assassin is just the hero that. What I think is happening is is teams are are finally figuring out how to cope with Knicks, and and the best way to do it honestly is heroes like TA. TA who can just pop a refraction charge, jump in and meld him down, and just blow him up. And I you know I still feel like the hero is very very strong. But it's becoming much more situational. You know, the days of the first pick, first pick Knicks assassin, I believe, are are maybe reaching their end. Um, you know, still there's going to be teams that do that. But like when I see EG's lineup, though, I do see a lineup that, that could be exploited with the Knicks assassin pick and Dignitas just opting not to go that direction now. But obviously, both teams are still fairly wide open. The only thing about EG is you've got two heroes who usually want that solo mid position. Bad Rider likely to wind up in the off lane, which gives an uh, an incomplete tri lane only one support. Picked up for EG so far, and we can see Dignitas recognizing that fact, taking out two of the stronger mid and late game heroes in the entire game in Lone Druid and Gyro, as well as banning out the Undying. Mm -hmm. We have seen some teams run Batrider in the triple lane, so that's not completely out of the question, although he, I, I think he's much more suited to an off lane or solo safe lane. Yeah, Bat in the jungle, Bat's one of those weird junglers. He's a lot like Lifestealer, where he starts out really, really slow, but once he gets up a, like just a couple of items, all of a sudden he's farming every camp at once. Literally, quite, you know, just running in the triangle. Well, they are going to be on the dire side, so it's a little bit more difficult to do than it is on the Radiant side. So that's an option. And it's something I've actually seen EG do before, but in fairness, uh, it was one of the single worst early games I've ever seen for a bad rider when Beat is did it against Absolute Legends when they were actually eliminated. Uh, before being a, given the chance to jump back into the tournament. But Chin, Profit, and Clockwork taken out here by EG. And interested to see how they want to play this out. Obviously, the uh, the natural counter, the way you usually want to deal with an EO and a Chaos Knight, is just put together a lineup that's going to be able to stick together and start taking five-on-five -five fights early. What kind of a hero do you think is going to jive the best with that? And if you're in EG's drafting boots here, Merlini, what are you thinking about for your fourth slot? Mm, I'm still trying to figure out their bands first before I move on to the picks. So, like, they picked... <coughs> excuse me. They banned out two of the pretty strong offlaners, you said, Clock and Furion, and they also banned out Chen. So, banning out Chen means that they're probably going to go aggressive triple lane. So, I'm trying to think of the good aggressive triple lane heroes, but they don't even have their carry yet. So, there's probably still a Luna. Um, Gyro is pretty good, but he, Gyro is banned out. Nax is also banned out. I mean, I don't really know what other very good aggressive uh, triple lane heroes there are as a carry. Um, I've seen Kim Kuka used before, but mm -hmm. he's not very that he's not very popular at all. Um, I guess it's much easier to find the support out first once we see what the carry is. I think Evil Genius is also wondering about which carry they want to take here. Um, Silla Bear is very good. And he's he's very tanky, which doesn't make him very vulnerable to IO and Chaos Knight ganks, but he's banned out. Mm -hmm. And Nyx is very similar to that, but again, banned out. And Jaro and Luna are both very good in the way that they can just completely own a CK and Wisp. You can just drop a call down where they're going to relocate or an Eclipse, and it'll usually just instantly kill the Wisp. Um, Navi has like Lion as a pick against Wisp because you can just impale finger and take him out of the fight. And right. then without that, CK is no longer Superman. So there's still some options open. I'm curious to see what they're going to pick, though. It's too hard to speculate at this point. With Dignitas, I'm sniffing an Ancient Apparition pick. They're, I mean, when you see the Beastmaster and the Puck, I mean, they could do something Fnatic-esque and run EO plus Chaos Knight and a duo mid. But, you know, an Ancient Apparition, CK, and EO, I mean, EO is not a very good triple lane, or now you're going to get me calling it a triple lane instead of a tri lane. It's not a very good tri lane hero for the most part. But there are ways you can cope with that. And whenever you stick an Ancient Apparition with those two heroes, you honestly can offensively tri lane that with a little bit of creative use of bottle crowing and allowing the, uh, the EO to just keep the mana pool of CK at maximum as long as he can, then that frees up the solo lanes for Puck and Beastmaster. The only problem I have with that is you end up with a lineup that feels very thin, a lineup that losing any one piece of it makes it almost impossible to fight, and that's not the position you want to be in. EG, on the other hand, robust robust Dota, I would call it. You look at their lineup, they are just they have a lot of ways to do anything. They have a lot of ways to initiate already. They have a lot of mobility in the Bad Rider, the Templar Assassin, and the Rubik, honestly, who's likely to build a Blink Dagger. Jakiro makes it very hard to crack towers. He's very good defensively. They're going to grab a Weaver, actually. Now, that I don't mind either. My cur I'm really curious to see how they're going to wind up laning this out, though. 
I'm very curious too. It's a very unusual pick. Uh, I don't think AA would work well in their lineup because he's really weak at level one. His cold feet is like not very good, and he's going to be level one for quite a while. And that in combination with Wisp is just going to make their tri lane super weak. Right. And Evil Geniuses looks like they're already setting up for an aggressive triple uh, with their Chen Ban and with the two uh, supports that can play very aggressively. And most teams choose to play aggressively versus a Wisp, tri, tri lane versus a Wisp, just because of Wisp really weak skill set prior to six. Mm -hmm. Juggernaut going to round out the draft here for EG. So they don't really have a hero that you would label as an, a super late game carry, but to be honest, neither does Dignitas. I mean, Weaver does scale relatively well into the late game, and you can always talk. I mean, if you look at a CK, he gets far enough ahead. Yeah, he's just going to maul people at 45 minutes as well as he will at 15. But at the same time, traditionally, Weaver and CK are heroes that have situational roles. Weaver is very great for cracking a tier 3. You can just get an MKB on him, set him up, set him down below the steps, and with the MKB, you can siege the tower very effectively. But these are not heroes that you look to go 50 minutes and get 400 CS on for the most part. And looking at EG's lineup, I really think this is a good draft for EG. I really, really do. I felt like Dignitas had a better draft than EG in game one. Still feel like they do. I just feel like they played such a good game of Dota that they got a win in a game where they were honestly playing from behind, at least in practical, in practical terms, uh, compared to Dignitas. But the punching power of EG in the mid game, Merlini, tell me, I mean, it is just so, so large. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really like it as much as you do, I think, though. Just because Juggernaut, I mean, he's okay, but there's so many ways to deal with his skill set. Uh, they have Roar mm -hmm. that goes through spin. They have uh, Wisp can just tether it away. Weaver has max move speed with Shikuchi and time lapse in case he gets Omni. Uh, Chaos Knight has split to tank the Omni slash illusions, and Puck has a very nice defensive skill set. So Joe won't be able to do a lot of work like we see a lot of Juggernauts do in that early mid game. But his healing ward is very, very strong, and hopefully he can work wonders in those extended team fights like we saw last game. When I look at EG's lineup, aside from everything, and that's an excellent point, by the way. I honestly hadn't even thought about the fact that his Blade Fury can be shut down by a roar that goes through it. Um, you know, I look at EG's lineup. Dignitas, what I worry about, again, and it just the, the way their lineup feels when I look at it, if you take any one element out of that, or if they're ever not in the right position, EG just has a lineup who can do so much damage, they're going to be able to get the jump on you with the strength of a, the, the strength and mobility of a TA and a bad rider. I, if Dignitas makes mistakes early, I really worry that this game can get away from them very, very quickly. And we're actually going to see EG running the aggressive tri-lane here with Bambo as well as the Jakiro and the Rubik. So looking to apply some pressure. And Puck's actually down here with uh, way too sexy i'm still yeah they actually are going to go and this is a very again a fanatic s kind of a, a a laning phase this is how fanatic likes to run ck and wisp quite often mm -hmm. i think eg's lanes are very very predictable though ta is almost certainly going to go mid and then with the draft it pretty much looks like an aggressive triple lane because they can't really kill puck or kill a weaver sorry with only one stun and i mean ice path is like only one second level one, they're not going to be able to zone out a Weaver, so they're most likely going to triple lane bottom, and Dignitas is able to predict it and react accordingly. Well, taking a look at the early laning phase, and I am going to run... Actually, I'll go ahead and run through the lineups while I have a minute, then we'll get your thoughts on the early laning phase, starting with Beastmaster on the side of Dignitas, way too sexy, going to be handling the Rexar, Wisp, or excuse me, EO, played by Fog. I'll probably call that hero Wisp for the rest of my life. Don't care what they change his name to. We're going to have Universe <laughs> playing on our Weaver. CK will be handled in mid by Aoi 2000. No surprise there. With Sneaking, who I agree did not have the strongest game in game one. Going to be looking to turn things around on Puck here in game two. The other side of the river, Jakiro going to be handled by Melk. Templar Assassin played by J.O. there in mid. Bad Rider going to be one-on-one -on -one in the solo safe lane played by Demon. Juggernaut handled by the stand and Sexy Bambo standing in for beat is with Fear playing our Rubik. So take a look at the early laning phase here. Break them down for me just in a, a sentence or two for each lane. How do you think they're going to pan out? Uh, top lane's probably going to be a wash. They shouldn't, neither of them should die to each other unless there's massive mistakes on either side. Uh, mid lane, J.O. is probably going to be shut out by um, the CK Wisp lane, but it looks like uh, Wisp is actually creep pulling a little bit. Um, but he's still going to get his bottle, and I don't think he'll he'll die either. They don't really have any really good ways to deal with the refraction. Spirits are okay, but it's nothing like a Darkseer Iron Shell or a Vino uh, Venomous Gale. And bottom lane, I'm actually really 
uh, worried about way too sexy. He's not going to be able to catch up with Ancient Stacking because he's in the bottom lane. They've already placed an Observer Ward here, which has been taken down, and a Sentry Ward, so he's not going to get any le sort of levels. And he's sort of like babysitting staking, but he can't actually do anything. It's a oh, little too Jay easy. Oh, just going to go for it. He's got a haste room. Looked like he was just trying to interrupt the farm of the Wisp who was pulling there and just flat out went for it. Now, Fear's going to telekinese Zowie. Both of these uh, players in no man's land. One second Chaos Bolt. There's a reality rift onto Fear. That'll be first blood. That's a little bizarre to me. Jay, you know, them getting aggressive, trying to make something happen near the stack, the uh, the easy camp, that made sense. But they just dove so hard there in mid, and in the end, ends up feeding a first blood to a hero you do not want to have getting a good start. Mm hmm That's not good for EG at all. I mean, Diving Tower at a T2, T2 Tower three minutes in this, a little bit quick. Howie, we saw have a very bad start last game, but I think with a good start, he's going to be able to make a huge impact. That was a great player, and with sufficient farm and... Uh, space to make things happen. He's definitely going to make big plays for Dignitas. Very much agreed. Taking a look at the CS, we can see CK atop the board. He's got 17, 16 for the Jug, so he's doing quite well. 14 for Bat, 13 for Weaver, a wash as you predicted. Puck's hanging in, though, given how much pressure he's ostensibly in, at least on paper, under uh, how much duress he's under whenever they decide to engage. He still has nine last. That's not bad. TA, though, suffering quite a bit here in mid. He's only got six, so J.O. is really struggling right now. Yep, and the Pucks are having a much easier time than he should just because the Rubik decided to go mid. And this dual lane, Juggernaut's not very strong in a dual lane, especially um, against a very good um, hero like Puck. I was just seeing if there was any action happening there, but it's just going to be a farm fest, it looks like. going to be low kill probably until the eight, eight or so minute mark. Four and a half minutes in, one kill on the board. That's the first blood that went the way of Dignitas following. Some ultra aggression showing itself out of EG. If you're just tuning in, you're here on One More Game TV 2. I'm EC, joined by Merlini, my very kind co-caster who agreed to join me for our second series of the day. Milk joined me for the first. We'll have a rebroadcast of this following the conclusion of our broadcast day here in the G1. And you can find VODs for this series and all other series that we've done here on One More Game at uh, YouTube.com slash ACTV. And since we're doing plugs because up, hang on, Universe is being, he is going to be telekinesis. So they have detection. They do not. Uh, they did, actually. Rubik had a sentry, but didn't even bother. Yep, Universe is going to be pretty safe in this top lane. Feeder's trying to make some stuff happen as a roaming support, but, I mean, this is a problem with Rubik. He doesn't do any damage. Level 1, he doesn't have, his telekinesis is just whatever. It's not like a Leshrac stun or like a support spin. It doesn't do any damage. It's not AoE. It's just so-so. And he only has his Fable to offer. So unfortunately, he's trying to make some kills happen in mid and top and make life easier for their solos. But it's just it's just not happening. I think it's mostly just a hero, though. Yep. What I was going to say, and it looks like we're going to have time now, back to the, just the farm fest. Since I went ahead and plugged what, what's going on with uh, One More Game, how about you tell folks where they can find more about you, my friend? Uh, sure, you can find me most of the time on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Merlini Dota. I also have a YouTube channel, Twitter, and Facebook, all slash Merlini Dota. All you players out there looking to learn and get better from pros and former pros, not a name you need to know more than you need to know Merlini's. Make sure you check that out, especially if you want to learn more about this beautiful game and get to have some fun doing so. Tune into your streams when I can't hold on. We're going to have a lasso on Fog. Demon trying to drag into the high ground, but there's the hookup with Universe, so they will be able to stay safe. Little bit of action showing itself on the map now, but still just one kill on the board. So let's let's say the status quo continues. And by the way, status quo is horrendous for J.O. He's got 10 last hits right now. He's basically in Beastmaster territory in terms of how bad of an early game he's having. But let's say things stay as they are right now for, say, another 10 minutes, Merlini. Who's going to benefit the most from a situation like that? I think it's Dignitas, uh, just because they have the weaker early game. Wiss is really weak, and Beastmaster is really weak because of the position they put him in. And if they manage to win the early game with this lineup, I definitely think they'll win the mid game with this lineup. So EG, on the back of that, obviously they're going to want to look to change the status quo, and they might be able to, to nope, never mind, that's fear getting dope, but here's Demon. Demon does not have a lasso. Fogged is the obvious target. They're trying to stack some sticky napalm. They're not going to pursue out, though. So still no chance to get much of anything. I'll tell you what I think is a big failure here for EG and is hurting them a lot is just how ineffective that tri-lane turned out to be. And as you said, Fear trying to make something happen. Now he's going to be engaged upon. 
Eating some damage. One more orb, and it does get the kill. So Rubik ends up dropping. And the early game for EG, basically an unmitigated disaster at this point. Yep, I would agree with you there. And they really need to capitalize on uh, Batrider's strength. Batrider's our first pick, and he's... Most teams would... Oh, is he gonna die here? Gonna go in Lasso Fog. He should get at least one. And Universe going laying into him will be able to make it a one-for-one -one trade. Trading a Wisp for a Bat, though, that's gonna be a trade they're very happy to make. J.O., who struggled so much in mid, is trying to pursue Universe, but Shikuchi... Got to make that a waste of time. Eight minutes in, four kills on the board. Dignitas looking strong. And, you know, it's one thing for the, the offensive trialing to be ineffective, but J.O. to be struggling as much as he is is what I feel like is really hurting them. I mean, he has 11 last hits, Merlini. 11. Yeah, that's not looking good. TDA is just one of those heroes that really needs a er good early and mid game so she can just snowball and just get her Dezo and just one-shot people late game, but she's having a very difficult time, already died once, and again, as he said, only 13 creep kills. She's so poor right now. Mm -hmm. Dies again here in mid. So, I mean, no, honestly, I don't know what they can do at this point, because whenever you pick a lineup that doesn't have a hard farming carry to go late, you have a Juggernaut and you have a TA. Those are heroes who want to fight sooner rather than later, but you have one that's not farming, another that's farming, nah, okay, but the CK on the other team, who happened to be paired up with a Wisp, He's got 52. He's got kills. He's already level... Yeah, he's level 8 already. Hell, he's going to have drums like now, basically. Mm -hmm. I think what they need to do is Fear should just rotate from top and mid and just babysit J.O. If they go on him, he just lifts a CK, throws him away, and J.O. won't die. Uh, but they're not they're not getting anything accomplished on top. It's just a solo weaver. And how is a level like 2 or 3, now 4 Rubik... Actually, he's 5 now. How are they going to kill the... Uh, the Weaver, they aren't going to, especially with time lapse and especially him just getting all the room early game to breathe. And even TP's mid looks like there might be an engagement here soon. Lasso's up on Demon. He was just farming the jungle, hence the usage of Firefly there. But for now, I mean, Puck's having a great start as well. I mean, given the pressure, he was supposed to be a hero under pressure here, but he's got 40 last hits. He's already got a set of treads up, a Bassy up. And we're beginning to see what I think is a very important factor. Beastmaster is now level 6 after having a start that should have had him really underleveled for quite some time. Just because of how successful the other lanes have been, he's been able to play catch-up without really any problem. Yep, and I think this mid-game, this 10 to 15 minute... Oh, is Jo going to die again? Two-second Chaos Bolt. There's an Ice Path to follow it up. Universe going to be telekinesis cleaned up with a Fade Bolt. Now fogged! Caught with a side trap, drums are popped, and here comes Bambo. He wants to engage. Heard the roar come out from the Beastmaster. They managed to get one more. Jo still alive under cover of Mel. Chaos Bolt from downtown. Four seconds. Trying to clean him up as well. There's the lasso! Owie! Caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Trying to dive a little too deep on Jo and made to pay for it. This is everything EG could have asked for. The chance to not only get kills, but they killed two of the three heroes they had to kill and had to shut down. Weaver and CK dropped down there. The roar from the Beastmaster did very little. And the fact that J.O. survives a pretty big deal in and of itself as well. Right, so that was exactly what EG needed. And they should have babysat J.O. Uh, earlier, but now that they've actually done it and he survived and managed to pick up a kills and almost even the kill count, things are looking much, much better for EG. Demon status on Blink Dagger, he's about mm, 1,100 gold away. And finally, his team can farm up for a little bit. Uh, I think that Wisp and CK strength is not engaging them head on though. They're like walked up middle and try and get a kill on a very difficult to kill TA. Even if she doesn't have items, she still has one refract and meld and probably double refract if used properly. Right. And they just need to look for weak points in their positioning uh, and just make make use of relocate. It hasn't been used at any Wisps in six for a couple minutes now. Ali is just in phenomenal shape right now. He's got drums, treads already done. He's got 15 wand charges, which gives him a little bit more leeway if they want to do something really aggressive. Demon is making up some ground. He's, they've got that going for them. Blink Dagger should be up relatively soon. But again, look at Puck. Puck is just slowly and quietly going, okay, guys, you're not going to worry about me. How about I just farm, soak experience, and then I'm going to show up with a Blink Dagger here in a couple of minutes. And you're going to wonder what the hell happened when you can't cast any spells and your dream coiled. Yeah, and I think Tia really needs to be able to keep on par with Puck in terms of items. Like, he doesn't even have his treads yet, and Puck's well on his way to blink right now. Taking a look at that Tia, yeah, as you mentioned, and it looks like he is going to get treads. Honestly, you know, in a situation like this, I'd almost feel like FaZe is the better choice just because you're playing from behind anyway, so why not get some... Here, relocate. And Bambo going to try to move. 
He will. No, he does manage to make it just barely. So he does. Oh, so this is this is where we see the jug pick. I was wondering why they picked it, but now I realize it's for the spin spin TP to counter the wisp gangs. Yeah, I had, honestly hadn't even thought about it, and it worked really well there. So they know now that going on him going to be a bit of a chancy proposal. Keeping an eye on the Blink Dagger on Demon. I feel like that really is going to be the most essential item in its timing and usage for EG to uh, to do well. And you, you can't even say to play back into this. They're behind, but they're not. You know, they cut that down. They honestly cut their uh, Dignitas' lead in half. It is ticking back upwards slightly. The experience is, but in both cases, experience and gold is still very close to uh, to the Meridian line. But once that Blink Dagger comes out on Demon, that's going to free EG up to do stuff like try to actually kill a Weaver, try to actually kill a CK, instead of just playing very reactionary. And we can see they're doing exactly what you suggest. It's a good call there, my friend. They're beginning to give a lot of attention to protecting J.O. here in mid. Yeah, and, and the Treads has actually gotten a, gained a lot more popularity uh, ever since the Refraction nerf, because you can just Tread Toggle if you need to cast Refract, and they'll kind of mitigate the 25 mana nerf. Uh, also, if you if you're in a really defensive position as Ju is right now, you can always just switch to straight treads. Face boost doesn't really help with survivability too much, especially against a wisp. The move speed is uh, not really useful for that, but the ace strength can help you out a lot there. Fourteen minutes in, nine kills on the board, five belong to Dignitas. Just want to remind everyone those two little tidbits Merlini just gave us. That's the kind of stuff he does pretty much all the time, guys. So make sure you check out his stream and his Twitter if that's the kind of stuff you want to hear more of. And you know, and I'm. You know, not trying to draw too much attention to it, but that's a perfect example of why newer players who want to learn more about this game have every reason in the world to follow you on Twitch as well as on Twitter. Very good information to have. Taking a look at Bambo. He's got phase. He's got drums. Doing what he can down here in this bottom lane. Sneaking continues to just farm up. He's going to have a Blink Dagger in about 600 gold. Speaking of Blink Daggers, where is Demon? I'll track him down here in just a minute. There you are. Yep, he's got his done. Yeah, he's just farmed a massive three stack and a double stack for so five camps for him right there. That was almost like a thousand gold right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's definitely looking to make something happen. He just smoked, picked up his blinky. Where we should keep an eye out on him for the next thirty seconds. He is going to be heading to mid, and Alwy and Fogged are way in enemy territory. Jo spots them and does decide to engage. There's a three second chaos bolt. Here comes the bat, and Demon missed. Didn't get a target. Blinked and missed with it. And manages wow. to not get anyone. That's the kind of mis that that right there was a potential big kill. And up, oh, there's a relocate up the top. Looks like they want to go on milk. TP reactions coming in. Milk the jukes around, and now with fear, there's still a lot of damage being done. They do manage to grab Alley. Down goes the macro pyre. Shao's there to help clean things up, and we're gonna see milk end up. No, milk stays alive thanks to Bambo. Universe though turns that around as he sent back to the well, but now likely to lose his own life. The sentry goes down, but he time lapses away. Or excuse me. Uh, yeah, time. Yeah, I actually got it right for once. Time lapses away, and EG still looking for him. Not going to be able to find him at the end, though. It's a two for one trade. CK and West traded for Shakiro, and at this state of the game, given the way things have gone for EG so far, I'd say that's a trade they're okay with. Yeah, that was uh, actually a bit sloppy by Dignitas. They like TP'd over here, and the. THC was able to manage to move way behind the tower, which allowed time for a couple of TPs. And then Wisp died with only a couple seconds left on his relocate, just leaving CK there to hang out to dry. Mm -hmm. We see tower is denied there in mid. So EG at least able to handle that. Taking a look at the tier one bottom. Puck has been doing his work. Did pick up his blank dagger in the meantime, so he's ready to fight. And really, that's going to be a big factor on both sides. I mean... Yes, you could talk about reach and mobility with EO and, and CK, but, you know, if you're in EG shoes, you're just going to pick a point, I think, and just go, okay, you know what, it's time to just five man, and that's how we're going to cope with this. We're just going to rely on the fact that Juggernaut's skill set is pretty good. J.O. had a bad start, but he's still going to be hitting fairly hard at the very, very least, and so on and so forth. So at that point, it becomes about initiation advantage. Who can get a hold of who? Can you grab the Wisp? Can you grab the CK with the bat? Or is it going to be the Puck who manages to blink in, silence, and coil three of you? I feel like they could have had a much better pick than this uh, Beastmaster, but he's not really doing that much. I feel like they would have been much better suited to, let's say, oh. And down at bottom, we're going to relocate. They're going to jump on Bambo. Bambo is going to try to spin out of it. Demon's there. Two-second Chaos Bolt to mobilize him. Actually, Bambo's able to get away, but there's a lasso grabbing Fog. Demon is going to end up dropping. Fierce there. The ice Path caught everyone. They're able to clean one up, able to clean two up. Owie's still up and fighting, trying to make it at least an honor guard, but will be dropping instead. What a reaction from EG. 
And this is what I was talking about in the draft. Whenever I was looking at their lineup, this is what I, I love so much about it. And I, you know, it's kind of a joke now with the viewers. I get it tweeted at me every day. Robust Dota. Whenever I use the word robust to describe a lineup, this is a good example. A team that just goes, you know what? It, it's we, we are just hard to kill, okay? We have the ability to all clump up in a piece of the map, stand there and fight. And, you know, it's one thing to talk about, you know, like in game one, we had RP, we had Chaotic Offering. But even that's not exactly what I'm talking about. Just We just saw the power there of Melk's Ice Path. That Ice Path made all the difference. Yeah, nice reactions by EG there. They're not falling apart to relocate games as we see many people do. And they're actually ahead on kills right now. So very nice recovery from the weak early game that we saw by them. 7 to 10. We're 18 minutes in. 10 of those kills belong to EG. Let's look at the goal graph. Dead zero. So despite having an awful laning phase, and hang on, we're not done. Universe looks to be the target. He's going to be telekinesed, and Demon's there with the lasso. Bambo has Omni Slash ready, and they do manage to clean him up. Puck can do nothing but stare on and sing a funeral dirge for his departed buddy. And, I mean, I, I think we're both in agreement here. Correct me if I'm wrong. The laning phase was pretty bad for EG, and somehow that goal graph for, for the first time in 15 minutes has crossed in their favor, the experience graph in their favor now. And they are just punching harder and faster than Dignitas can handle. Yeah, I think they had a very good advantage early game, but they kind of threw it away by taking all these like very aggressive fights. First was like mid here without relocating. That was their first big fight that they lost. And then this fight up here near the T1. And then again, another fight right here. They're like taking fights way too close to towers and EG is able to respond appropriately by just TPing. They're not making, uh, they're not making them work hard for the counter ganks. They're right. just just lining them up and just feeding them because Wiss isn't able to survive um, for 12 seconds. And it looks like TA is actually going to catch up on items very soon. 1,500 gold well on his way to Blink Dagger. Take a look at the net worth. Tops on the board is actually Juggernaut, which is honestly surprising to me. I mean, if I had to guess, like if there was a hero that was going to surprise me with being tops on the board, I would have said bad, actually, just because of how efficiently he's been farming. And hang on, we're going to have another fight break out. J.O. tanking through it. There's the Ice Path Telekinese right into it. And we're going to have the lasso on Fog. Fog going to be cleaned up. Coil goes down, sneaking, able to get away. But they do manage to clean up the Wisp. The rest of Dignitas forced to run. Doesn't look like the fight's over yet. Way too sexy. He's in position. Fear, undercover of Shikuchi gets away. Two-second Chaos Bolt walks down Melk. Now's the spin. Bambo trying to find a kill. Will get it before the orb can be used. And way too cleaned up as well. Milk is playing out of his mind. He has hit every ice path. And it's going to be another gigantic turnaround in favor of evil geniuses. Melk is honestly the difference maker here, Merlini. He is hitting everything dead on the money. Yeah, he, he definitely is. And a really uh, a really big part of support that most people don't notice is that he's always there. He's yep. always there to counter these CK Wisp gangs, like every fight, top fight, mid fight, and this recent fight, and the one on bottom. He's just always there to set up these really nice ice pads that just interrupt Dignitas' flow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, Melk's an excellent player, but he's playing excellent even by Melk standards. And as you mentioned, the most important thing here is positioning both in a micro and macro sense. He's where he needs to be to throw out ice pass that are effective, but more importantly, he's just there to fight. And this lineup is just showing its robustness. That's right. Tweeted at me. Go for it. Uh, showing <laughs> robust Dota in its best form. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, these engagements, it's not that Dignitas is screwing the pooch by making a ton of mistakes. It's just whenever they're all together, the damage output, the survivability, the fact that EG can just survive by the innate nature of their lineup is showing itself. And Dignitas has more of a scalpel than a shotgun kind of a lineup, I think. This is a lineup that wants to pick the team apart, not just run into the brick wall that is turning out to be this evil genius's composition. Yeah, I don't think the pressure is really on Dignitas. They've been trying to play very, very aggressively and like keep the TA down. But to be honest, they could just outform them, get some BKBs, get uh, maybe some like a drums or Vlads or Mech on Beastmaster or something like that, and just play a little bit like let EG move around the map a little bit just so they split up. Notice EG again, they're five. They're always going to be five just because that's how you play versus a Wisp. Right. And to counter that, all you need to do is just split push like we saw EG do last game. So Dignitas needs to take a page from EG's playbook, tone down aggression, play a little bit safer, and let EG split up around the map so they can find those picks that they so desperately need. You know, that's a great point that you, you kind of hinted at there. You know, the fact that the re one of the reasons Dignitas has not been very effective in their relocate is EG has not given them any openings. We are going to see the tier one bottom drop. It looks like Dignitas wants to take a shot at tier two, but reactions by a TP will prevent them from going to work on the tier two. Three from EG still remain smoked in the jungle, though.
And they're going to have a target in sneaking. Uh, honestly, not the target they usually want. Checks it with his orb. And here we go. He honestly just told him where he was. And they're going to go for it. Spear is going to lead the way. There's the roar that he had stolen from Beastmaster. And cleaned up immediately. That's 45 seconds. They got a big-ass creep wave. Are, I'm, they're actually going to fall back here, so playing very, very cautiously. But uh, still, a very high-priority kill. Mm -mm. And EG has very good vision of right now. They have uh, two wars on bottom and just really good map control everywhere, especially with those TA traps that are very well set up for Roshi and soon. But I don't know if Dignitas is going to take this 45 on top, though. I don't think they should. Again, EG has been very good at reacting to Dignitas' aggression. And back to that point that uh, that you made and I think deserves expanding upon. You know, one of the reasons Dignitas has been struggling, and when you look at where this game turned around, it was the fact that EG is getting a lot of kills under their own towers whenever they try to relocate. And that's just a brilliant way to play it out. The only time they're allowing themselves to be split up is whenever they're next to a, a tier one tower or a tower that everyone can react to. And other than that, when they're in the jungle, whenever they're anywhere else on the map, they're in groups of four or five, as we see right here. And wow. Two ships passing in the night. Owie just dodged the biggest bullet of his life. Did you see that? He went this way and basically walked right past the entire team of EG and uh, didn't manage to see them or for them to see them, uh, for them to see him. We're going to see Fog caught out. There's the lasso as well. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Wisp is back in the well. Yep, and things are not looking good for Dignitas right now. J.O. has uh, definitely recovered very nicely. He has a hammer... Power treads and a blink dagger. Well, let's go ahead and, you know, while we have a minute, and now we're going to see way too actually caught out. Ice Path is there. Milk always in position. And there's another kill. Beastmaster gone for 40. But while we have a second, as they might, yeah, they're going to go for Roche. This is the perfect time anyway. The big elephant in the room with EG, they have not played as well or up to the standards that they have set for themselves over the last few months. That's no surprise. The last two or three weeks, they've been making a big comeback. And it could not have come at a better time, given the invites for the International Three are going out is as well documented. Team Liquid, uh, a team that was already been that has already been invited, for example. EG, where do you fall, Merlini? Do you think they deserve an invite, or should they have to go through the qualifier? Ooh, I don't know. That's a really tough call. I it think is. definitely Liquid is the strongest of the North American teams at the moment, mm -hmm. and judging that by this performance, it seems like EG deserves one over Dignitas and. Previously, I think Dignitas were the favorites um, in this particular duo. Uh, but I think there's just really, really strong talent in the Eastern scene. <laughs> oh, fear. Poor fear. <laughs> fear just ran right up and basically gave him a hug before dying. Fogged, gonna get to be the return kill. Just the way that looked was so hilarious. Like, he Shikuchi's in, he's looking to do damage and be all cutesy. He runs right up and just eats a Chaos Bolt from absolute po point-blank range and dies immediately. So just one of those uh, funny Dota moments. But anyway, I mean, that's a big question, and this is the reason I bring it up is the, the next question I was going to ask regarding that topic is if they win 2-0 here, which it looks like, honestly, they're on the way they have the chance to do. I mean, they're ahead pretty handily. Um, if they do that, how how heavily does that weigh in their favor? I mean, getting a win on not just against a good team and Dignitas, a team that I think I can agree deserves to be at the International via Invite. Um, getting a win against them, not just like on scrim or not just in a group stage, but a best of three win in a setting like this, that has to, to really be enough to at least make some people think that EG, as inconsistent as they had been up to this point, is playing at a level that might merit that invite after all. Mm, I, I think both of these teams should be invited. It looks like there's already six teams, uh, and Navi is almost certainly going to be invited because they were right. uh, champions before, and they're just a very, very good team, and they definitely deserve to be there. So we'll, we'll just consider it seven, which leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, minus the qualifiers and the wild card. And I think there's a lot of talent that hasn't been invited yet, for example, LGD Int and a couple of other Asian teams. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how exactly Valve wants to do it, if they want to perhaps just split it up, maybe a few teams from North America, a few teams from Europe, and a few teams from Asia, just so people have uh, everyone to root for, and so no area really feels underrepresented. Oh, poor Fog. Yep. Um, See you or if they want to actually just invite the strongest teams. If it was right. the... Uh, 13 strongest teams, I would probably say that there should be more uh, European and Asian teams and not three North American teams. But again, who knows Who knows what goes on in Valve's mind when they throw out these invites. 
I completely agree. And you touched on a topic that I think is actually really important. And it's sometime soon, Merlini, and this is no secret. I've talked about it. I'm working on a podcast concept um, that I'd like to put into practice in the next month or two. And this is exactly the kind of conversation I'd love to have on it. So I'll let you be my first officially invited guest. No idea when that'll be, but uh, once things settle down. But, you know, and that's you touched on them. We got to talk about the actual game in front of us. So we can't harp on this forever now. But that's a very important question as well. Is it, do you just invite the 13 best teams on the planet? Or is, do you take regions into account? Is it important? Is it more important that every region be equally represented than it is that the Alp, hold on. There was a Wisp gank. Yep, they're just going to get the tower. But J.O.'s there, and J.O. gets the deny, and they're going to kill Fogged again. Oh, my goodness. What a deny coming out of J.O., and they managed to kill off poor Fogged one more time. Can't even get my thought out, but hey, that's all right. Big plays and adequate interruption any day of the week. Mm -hmm. We see Sexy Babel actually going to Scepter build. It's pretty unusual. People hate on Scepter a lot because mm -hmm. they think he really needs damage as opposed to utility. But I think it's actually pretty good in this because he needs to be able to survive burst, whether it be from CK Wisp Ganks or from Puck Silence or from Beastmaster Roar. He needs to be able to survive. And if he doesn't survive, he doesn't do any damage. So I think Scepter's a pretty good choice. It gives him uh, very, very large amounts of HP, 390 to be exact. And uh, his ultimate is a little bit more effective. Not that he really needs it to solo kill somebody like Wisp or Beastmaster, but it is very useful uh, in general. Taking a look at the items, we just saw Universe showing off his brand new Lincoln Sphere in the shadow of the Tier 3 top. Taking a look at our Beastmaster. Uh, looks like he's going to be getting himself of lads. I don't think that's any surprise. He had a slow start, but bounced back admirably. EO, Urn Bottle, not a whole lot more. Owie is working on an armlet. He has his BKB and his treads up. And we've seen a lot more spread out fighting. Soon enough, though, I think D uh, EG is going to be in a position to just go start looking to take bigger fights. And we're going to see Roshan respawn. Yeah, he's going to be quite a ways away. But for the moment, I think EG's looking pretty strong. Melk's already got his mech up. And I say already, it's 30 minutes in, but he does have his mech up. Jail with the Aegis has actually gone Deso build. So he's looking to do damage. Yeah, now that EG has survived like the Wisp uh, CK phase of the game where it, it, they're like really strong, I'd say they're really strong as soon as Wisp hit 6. So probably like 10 to 25 minutes. Now that they survived that, they, don't, they can just relax and just take it easy a little bit, farm up, do Roshan, get more items on TA, and then sooner or later they can just overpower them with items. The pressure's not really on EG to do anything. The pressure's on Dignitas to make good use of their Wisp pick and Beastmaster pick and find kills where they can. Speaking of kills, we got 29 on the board in a 30-minute game. Funny the way it works out, and it's the vast majority of games I cast is almost always one kill a minute. Almost always. Just the, you know, the way Dota's played now, and yeah, I'm certainly not complaining. Makes for some very, very exciting games for the most part. But yeah, I mean, as you said, they weathered the storm quite admirably, and I think, again, it comes down to how well they moved and why Dignitas, you know, you understand them pressing a bit and feeling some urgency and trying to make those relocate ganks happen. But the vast majority of the time, they're relocating on top of enemy towers. That kind of defeats the purpose. If you're going to do that, then just go ahead and five-man push towers instead of T. And instead, they found themselves in situations where TP reactions basically sealed their fate as soon as they showed up. And that's why they find themselves behind right now. Take a look at the net worth tab. We still got Juggernaut at the top. Two of the top three, though, do belong. Up, oh, check that. Now they belong to EG. So unit <laughs> double Shikuchi. Two ships passing in the night. This could be trouble for Universe, though. He's going to Shikuchi to the north as the rest of EG shows themselves. And, I mean, let's let's play this game again here, Merlini. Put yourself in the captain's chair of both teams. What's the number one goal at this stage of the game for both squads? So, EG just needs to minimize casualties and not just find themselves picked off and notice that they're grouped up. This has been a common theme for this whole entire game. It's been They've been grouping up and playing very smartly and just Stay, sticking together, which is very important. So Mill can line up those nice ice pass. Uh, Bat can lasso the Wisp, and Wisp can just do his, or not Wisp, Tia can just do his thing. And this pretty much puts a lot of pressure on Dignitas because they're forced to farm with a lineup that they really want to gank with. And now that they lost the ganking game, they're pretty much resorting. They're, they're drawing uh, Blake Straws here. What are they going to do? Yep. They don't really have the late game anymore. Owie just has BKB and Armlet, which right. is not really anything compared to what is on EG. And looks like Weaver only has a Lingus at this point with 2,100 gold on the bank. But I feel like with their early lead, they could have just played a very 
passive game. Not that that, that they that's what they wanted to do, mm-hmm. especially judging by the way they drafted. But they're kind of forced in that position because EG is just five maining the whole time. They're being very good at keeping the towers and defending the important. The universe is going to be lassoed back. Ice path. Off the mark there Ooh. from Melk. Yeah, that was just a flat out miss, throw the way to put it, so perhaps a misclick. <laughs> might have might have cost him a kill there, but all in all, I think we can let that one slide given how well he's played. I'll tell you who's scary on the map right now to me more than just about anyone's Bambo. With his Aghanim Scepter, that means he's tanked up. He's gonna have a gorillion jumps on his on his ulti. We've all seen how that works. And Bambo over in the woods knows what's going on. We're gonna see TP reactions come out. They can get out of here. This could be big. Those Wisp illusions are gonna spot out. The fact that they are being pursued. And yeah, Bambo just gonna go ahead and turn back around. But he's tanked up, he's got a lot of damage, and now he can even transition to just a flat out carry build. And you know, Juggernaut's not known as the best late game carry in history, but he does have crit built in as a passive, so he can do some damage. You know, he does like a lot of mobility though, and he doesn't scale as well as other heroes, but that's not really what Juggernaut's there for. He's not there for the late game. GG one or two shots. He's just there yep. for his utility. His Omni Slash and Blade Fury makes it very difficult to kill. Uh, kill Healing Ward is an incredible skill. A skill late game, five percent of our HP. It just gets better and better as the game goes on, especially for these five main fights where they're constantly pushing towers and trying to force fights with Dignitas. Speaking of pushing towers, DG got their eye on the tier two bottom, and we can see a little bit of damage being done here. But Dignitas has just felt. They felt absent, really. I mean, I just haven't felt their influence on the map in a very long time. And against a lineup like EG's, I, you know, especially if you draft a lineup that is built on the idea of mobility, split, push, and reach, which is, you know, those three words sum up Dignitas's lineup in total. If you draft a lineup like that, I should be feeling as a caster, I should be feeling your influence all over the map and basically having a hard time keeping up with the way everything is going. That's kind of how the early game felt. But things just did not work for them, and because of that, we now have been feeling very little influence out of them. And this game, again, and I kind of mentioned it when I initially saw their lineup and why I liked EG's lineup so much. When you're up against a very full-bodied, robust lineup like EG is as drafted here, just a lineup who can execute so much so well and in, and in very tight quarters, it's real dangerous that you end up just letting the game get away from you, and I think that's honestly the direction we're heading now. Looks like Dean is looking for a pickoff. He does have a gem in his inventory. I think this has contributed to a lot of EG's map control. They aren't really able to keep up wars on the map. And Beastmaster's Hawk. Uh, he actually just skilled up Greater Hawk. He just hit level 13. So only recently, 35 minutes, 35 minutes into the game, has he been able to get that invisible Hawk. And it really, we really haven't seen anything much out of Beastmaster. And I was a little bit like questioning of their pick at the beginning because it just seems like a... Oh, looks like Owie's in trouble here. And Ooh. Owie? That looks like he is going to get away. Melk and, and Fear wanting no part of it. Yeah, I don't think Beastmaster is very well suited to this, like, hard support role that he that he's in right now. Yep. And he tried, like, a couple of games here and there. But, I mean, what really, what is a really underleveled Beastmaster going to do? His stun is, like, okay, but it's on such a long cooldown that you would really want somebody like, I don't know, even Sven, for mm -hmm. example. I think Sven would just work a lot better into their lineup. J.O. Bounce back so well after a horrendous start. He's actually hitting quite hard. I mean, when, when you can see when he has refraction pop, he's actually hitting for 270 a shot. So he's going to be giving them plenty of punching power. Demon with a four staff and a blink dagger, as well as a ghost scepter to increase his survivability. He's looking to be in pretty good shape. Fear taking his blink dagger up. Nice mobility build out of him. That mech now augmented with a Ghost Scepter for Melk to give him some survivability. And this is usually when you can tell that a game's beginning to maybe get a little out of hand. It's, you know, you look at Universe, it's like, yeah, his farm's fine. He's got a Demon Edge, a Lincoln Sphere, and Aquilae. He's not where he would want to be, but hey, he's doing all right. But when you start to look at the supports, and you start to notice the supports seem really anemic. Like, what's Fog to have? Nothing. He's got an urn and a bottle. That Vlad's on way to, basically, has taken him all game to farm that gold. He does have 2,000 gold in the bank, so at the very least, he should be getting another item soon. But the supports from EG are beginning to feel a lot tankier and a lot more survivable. Yep, and often the supports items decide the game, whether you have a lot of four staffs and mechs, and possibly even a sheet from the three, uh, four or five hero, that's a really big deal. Yep, absolutely. And we saw that in practice in game one, and we're seeing it in practice here. And again, it's a maxim I, I live by, is more games are, are decided by support play than they are by carry play. Looks like Demon's trying to scout out for Universe with his gem, but looks like he will shoot you away to safely safety. 
We're coming up on 38 minutes into the game. Things have slowed down a bit. 29 kills on the board. Same score we've had for quite some time. E.G. having two-thirds of those. Better than two-thirds, actually. So, you know, right now, Dignitas is doing what you said you thought they should. Slow things down. Don't press quite as hard. Don't allow yourself to make any more mistakes. Get uh, All things being equal, though, like, what is your game plan as we roll towards 40 minutes now if you're in Dignitas' shoes? You know you're behind. It's not the most insurmountable lead. I mean, we can see 4,000 gold, little right about 5,000 experience. It's, it, it's you know, it's worrisome, but it's not the end of the world. What's your game plan to uh, get things back on track here in the late game? They really need to try and get one pick off and then try and force a Roshan fight, but it looks like it's already too late. EG is already taking down Rosh right now, and Dignitas is in no position to contest it, but... They need a for split push, pretty much just do do what EG did last game. Split push, try and find really crucial pickoffs, like Snaking, for example, last game died in a couple of very important times in the game, and EG is just not giving Din Dignitas any openings to work with. They're all in very good positions. They've taken down all the wards with um, wards with the gem. Rubik has, usually has like Sakushi most of the time, as you can see, he just stole it right now, so he's very difficult to kill. Bat has Firefly and Blink and Force Step and Ghost Scepter and Gem. He's like <laughs> extremely difficult to kill. And Bambo went this very tanky build, which I think is a very good choice versus their lineup. And uh, aside from their items, their positioning is just really good. Notice they're always like really close to each other. Yep. And like CK Wiz can't do anything for a set. You just have to farm it up. But one thing that Dignitas does have is. Um, CK Illusions. CK Illusions, once he gets heart, which he's actually well on his way towards, he has Reaver and 800 gold already. EG doesn't really have any good AoE. They have Fade Bolt, okay? They have some minor stuff from Firefly, but Juggernaut's not very good for multiple targets. Neither is TA. Right. So if Chaos Knight can get a heart and activate his armlet and split, he can actually probably kill a couple heroes. But again, these supports on EG are very farm at the moment, and Mailcast is um, Ghost okay, Scepter. Man. We're going to have an engagement oh, here, Alway. They went for it. Omni Slash hitting everything but the target he wanted. However, Alley is going to be caught with Lasso. I do want to point out, by the way, and I had the camera on it. I hope the viewers didn't notice. Alley just fat fingered a BKB. He fat fingered his 10 second charge on BKB. Just sitting in lane farming, he fat fingered it. And good phase shift there. And sneaking still going to die. Like that, again, look where, where did that relocate take place? Right here. What's right next to it? Little thing called a tier two. Like, I mean, this is just what they've been forcing Dignitas to do. And, at, you know, early on, you can understand you're just trying to get something going. That right there just felt like a really bad mistake that didn't need to be made. Right. And they have a sheep on seeking. If they ever find a hero alone, they can most likely kill it with CK Sun, Tether, and Reality Rift, and Pucks Trot, Silence, Dream Coil, Scythe of Vice. They do have the firepower. They just need to find a good opening. And Universe is almost <laughs> in their fountain. <laughs> not, that's, that, that's not your base, buddy. That's not your base. He is going to be easy. Now he's got Shikuchi. There's a silence, though, that was stolen by Fear. Oh, Fear almost securing the kill. They just didn't have any other form of lockdown. And they're not done yet. They're going to keep chasing him. Demon says, I've got a gem, bro, Cephas. And he should be able to catch him, actually. Nope, never mind. He's going to back off. I thought his force staff was good to go, but he already used it. So barely after... I guess he thought he was playing chess. Thought maybe if he got to the edge of the map, he'd become Roshan or something. <laughs> Yep, and Dignitas actually getting set up some items now. Weaver has his MKB, so he can actually uh, do a lot of good work on perhaps um, Templar Assassin or the Juggernaut. And again, Aoi almost has his BKB. So I think once they get, um, sorry, I, I said BKB, I meant heart. Once they get his heart, I think they can definitely take a fight. And there's still a, quite a bit of time until next Roshan, but if the game does last, um, whatever, seven more minutes it looks like, until the next Roshan, that's going to be a really crucial one because that one will be the cheese. Well, Jail, at this point, I don't know why EG wouldn't just force a fight. I mean, you know, you've got an Aegis, you can afford to take a chance, you know you're ahead, 7,500 gold now, the advantage, 10,000 experience, and again, you know, the players don't know the exact metrics, but they know, I mean, there's no doubt about it, they know just how far ahead they are. And as you said, hard, a very crucial item for a CK, so don't give him time, and Demon's gonna go ahead and pop his Ghost Scepter, and him and Universe just kinda trading trading how do you do's up there in top lane in the meantime casual tier three dies just a casual tier three and we're gonna see the glyph pop it was a tier two for tier three trade and bambo just not scared he's gonna be roared out by way two and here comes fear fear's gonna be hexed out though way two's gonna be blown up never had a chance he's forced to buy back and honestly 
Here we go. Gonna re-engage. Melk eating a lot of damage from that Phantasm, but the Ghost Scepter bails him out. Now J.O.'s the target. There's the roar! Fear! Stealing every ability he has to steal, and that might be enough to end this game. Fear, you monster. Fear and Milk have just blown this game open, and Dignitas calls it. Dignitas, the team that anyone would have told you was a favorite of all the North American teams. And granted, there's only three, but still. Team Liquid and Dignitas playing the best in the last three months. And they are knocked out of this tournament. They are done at the hands of an evil geniuses squad who lost and was eliminated in round one before battling their way back after getting another invitation because Absolute Legends had to, uh, had to drop out. And now the Cinderella story that is the evil geniuses squad keeps their run alive and still got their eye on a potential berth in the G1 Finals. What a phenomenal game, Merlini. Yeah, I'd say MVP goes to EG supports. They just oh, played man. ridiculously good. So congratulations to EG. Looks like we'll be seeing more of them in the next few days. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, the bracket. Don't worry, guys. I will flash it back to our final, uh, final scoreboard. See where things stand. Navi and Liquid faced off earlier today. Liquid again was knocked down to the lower bracket by EG. They're going to have a chance of revenge as EG gets past Dignitas. It is a North American showdown in the semifinals of the lower bracket. Now, just a reminder, as you look at these brackets, the winners and lower bracket will not meet again. Fnatic and Alliance will face off in coming days. The winner of that will qualify directly into the G1 Live Land Finals. Now, the lower bracket, whoever makes it through the lower bracket will qualify as well. So, Fnatic or Alliance going to be awaiting one of these two remaining teams, Liquid and EG, in the lower bracket finals while the other moves on. And I am just stunned. I mean, you know, Dignitas is a phenomenal team. EG, we knew it. And I, you know, I, I've talked about it the last few times I broadcasted them. They're just a team who seemed like they were really in search of an identity. And at this point, so long as they've got Fear playing Rubik, I think their identity should be pretty solid. Mm, looks like this new roster is looking pretty, pretty good for them. I like Sexy Mambo. I think he's a really great player. And it seems like he's doing very well with the rest of the EG team at the moment. Yep. All right, guys. I'll go ahead and again pop it back to our final scoreboard. 43 minutes, 16 seconds. The official game time. A lopsided 29 to 9. The final kill score as EG takes down their North American rivals and keeps their Carl Spackler story alive. Moving through the lower bracket in search of redemption and in search of a berth in the G1 Grand Finals.